Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 80 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. This is part two of this series where in the last part, we trained a model using random forest and also support vector machines, but uh, we saved the model for random forest. And in this video, let's load the trained model and then segment a whole bunch of images. Now, just a quick reminder again, what we have done was uh, take a training image and la corresponding labeled image. And from the training image, extract a whole bunch of features by applying different digital filters and then capture the responses as individual columns into a data frame and supply this data frame to a machine learning algorithm, in this case, random forest. And in this process, we dropped all the pixel values with a value of zero because they represent areas that are not labeled uh, because they do not contain any information. So that's what happened in the last tutorial, of course, in Python. So now let's jump into our Python IDE. And I still have this uh, from my last tutorial where, like I said, we loaded an image and uh, we generated Gabor features, 32 of them. And to that, we also added additional filtered responses from Canny, Edge, Robert, Sobel, Shar, Pruitt, and Gaussian 3 Sigma, Gaussian 7 Sigma, and Median filtered. And then we also added a column uh, of all the labels. So we know, you know what the ground truth is. And we dropped all the labels with a value of zero because they don't mean anything for this machine learning process. And then we also encoded the labels, which was an optional step. But uh, eventually we divided our data frame into X and Y, where X is all the features and Y is the labels. And we trained a random forest and we also trained support vector machines and we realized random forest gave us much better accuracy than support vector machines. And eventually we saved the model uh, 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 into a file name called sandstone underscore model. Okay, so, uh, so far so good. Now, how do we take that model and segment? Let's actually look at the structure here. Let's say I have a folder. Let's go to segmented images. Go ahead and delete everything we have there and test images. So I have about, uh, uh, let's say five images or in reality I have uh, for this data set 1000 images that I would like to test, but of course I don't wanna waste your time. So let's just pick five of these images at various depths in this, in this uh, uh, image stack and segment them, okay? Using the model that we trained in the last tutorial. So how do we do that? So let's go to my part two code. Again, all code will be shared via the GitHub. Look at the link underneath uh, in the description. Okay, so what do we do? There are many ways you can automate this process, but the whole point here is extract the features from each image exactly the way we did during training. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. A Gabor one means should mean the same, okay? So first we have to read in an image like we did before, right here. We have to read in an image and we have to extract exactly the same Gabors, exactly the same uh, other features and create a data frame and supply that to as an input to our trained model, just like we did here, okay? So I copied the entire code from here, most of it, okay? Up to the training part. And I created a function called feature extraction, okay? And I just tabbed everything. As you'll see, this is identical. So what I'm doing is create a data frame, empty data frame, and then to that, add the pixels of original image. If I switch back to my previous tutorial, this is exactly what we have done initially. Okay, uh, we created an empty data frame and to that we added a column called original image and uh, added all the pixels. And then we added Gabor to that data frame. Exactly the same thing that you'll see here. So this is the first column and then the other columns are added exactly the same way. And then Canny and Roberts and Sobel, everything exactly the same. If you don't have the same number of columns, same type of data, then uh, of course, it'll throw an error. Even if it doesn't throw error, maybe sometimes you make mistakes that are not easy to catch. So you'll get wrong results and then you'll wonder why. So it's very important to go back and make sure, okay, both look very similar, okay? In fact, uh, the best thing to do is uh, separate this feature extraction part and create a class by itself and then call that class into your training 
and also into your prediction. So any change you make, uh, you know, in the feature extraction is applied, so you don't have to worry about this. So that's, uh, I'll leave that for you. But for now, we are capturing what this function returns is a data frame, that's it, right? I mean, all of this, it returns this data frame that contains all these values. And that data frame goes into our prediction, that's it. So how does it go? Now, I'm uh, importing pickle because our uh, in the last tutorial, we actually ended by saving this, dumping this model as a pickled file, okay? So that's what we are importing here. So we are loading the model, and then I'm giving a path of test images, sandstone slash test images, right? This folder path. And now I'm using os.listdir, or you can use glob, it's up to you, to walk through the folder through each image, okay? So in fact, if I just do these lines for now, you should see that it's reading these file names, 15, 75, 120, 180, and 270, right? So these file names, and once we have the file names, I'm just doing imread, just like the last time, converting that into gray, and then extracting the features, which is feature extraction on my input image. What does it do, feature extraction? It just runs this function, yeah? So let's go ahead and do that. And then uh, what, that is my result. And my result is going to be one single column. I need to reshape it into my original image shape. And I'm converting that into integer eight, otherwise that would be integer 64. And when you save it, sometimes it may give some, throw some weird errors depending on uh, the version of Python you're working on. But uh, I am converting each of these, uh, you know, into integer eight and then saving it into a different folder called segmented images with the same file name as my original image name. Please read this and now let's remove all variables from our previous run and just run this and the first step sandstone versus 0, 0015 and if i open segmented images i should see a result any moment now so let's in the meantime open our input images so in fact let's go back test image and open the first test image and then look at the result we are back here and uh, oh i did a mistake here so let's go ahead and uh, i mean it did save it i should read something called sandstone underscore model the one that we just saved sandstone underscore model not the other one so sorry about that let's do this one more time in fact let's let's do that okay so let's run this Let's clean up our segmented images, remove the one that it segmented already, and then run this one more time. So the other sandstone model multi-image is the one we are going to do in our next tutorial where we're going to use multiple images for training, which means the result hopefully would be more accurate compared to what we are getting right now. So uh, image number one is done already. So let's go ahead and uh, have a quick look at that image. So this is the raw image and how does the segmentation look like and there you go that's our segmentation you don't see much of anything that's because our pixel values are if you remember one two three four so let's go ahead and or zero one two three sorry we encoded this in this case so let's go from zero to three and there you go so this is our result and this is the actual image and that is not bad actually and you see down here, it's showing up as bright pixels. It is brighter, but not that much brighter. So hopefully we'll get better results when we have more labeled data. You can label more pixels in one single image. What do I mean by that? I think you know what I'm meaning, uh, but let's go ahead and check that. The mask that we used for this is, uh, it looks like this, not many. Uh, pixels. You can actually uh, be very patient and label a whole bunch of these in here, or a better practice would be to load uh, a whole bunch of images from different depths in this example, because this is a Z stack, and then label them separately. 
and combine all the labels. This is exactly what we are going to do in our next tutorial. So please stay tuned and subscribe to this channel.